Today we are back at school, actually at a school in London and we are changing a load of old theatre lights in a drama hall for some new fancy DMX controlled lights that are going to give loads more features to the students here. So this should be quite an interesting video for you guys to watch. This is the first pole that has the lights on it. This is called an internally wired bar. So basically these 15 amp sockets all the way along the bar are wired from the inside of the pole. So we've got four Fresnel lights on this pole and we're just gonna unplug them, unscrew them and get them off. Safety hasp. So this is a traditional theatre light. This is a Fresnel, so it's used for a wide spread of light. And um, if we scrape the dust off, we can see, blimey, it's 1200 watts, this lamp. So when you've got, you know, 10, 15 of these on, it's quite a lot of power just to, you know, have a little practice with the lights in a school. So. It's no wonder that the drama teacher wants them upgraded to LED. They've actually been upgrading all of the functional lighting in the school as well. So yeah, once these are all swapped over, they can have all the lights on full whack and be using, you know, a tenth of the energy that they were. This is the control room. So we've got the PA system and the lighting desk is gonna be going in there. It's a bit of a small operator's window, but oh well. All our DMX cables are gonna end up back in that room so that the desk plugs into them. So we're in today. Oh no, I can't say that. This is a J clamp. So basically, this nut and bolt. Where is the bolt? Oh, there. <laughs> so basically, this hooks over the bar or pole, um, and then you tighten that up to clamp it to the pole, and then this bolt goes through the light fitting like that, and that's how they're held up onto the bar or the truss. So these are just four cheap. Um, RGB PARs, or cheaper than the other lights that we're fitting, but these are really just for effects and not to light the whole scene. For the more expensive ones, we've got these Illuminate Fresnels, which are considerably heavier. They're completely metal. Got a nice screen on the side, lots more connectivity and you can see it's much better quality fitting. So to light the whole stage, we've got, uh, is it six of these? One, two, three, four, five, six, eight of these. A couple of them are color as well. Corey and Orsa have just arrived from Oi Electrical and they are currently dismantling the old dimmer packs in the control room. So let's go and have a look. Now I'm going to touch the ladder. But if I label up these cables with the correct ident, so if you come around here, Mr. Cameraman, you can see what we're talking about. You've got these idents on the cable, but they're not the right ones. So I'm thinking if we kept that connector block, you could even put a blank panel on the top, take the top half of the rack off, and mount the DB just on top of the rack. Just keep this bottom section. Yeah. You could even keep that section <coughs> for your, your multiplex. Mm. Or even if that comes off and 
you can't access like I'm assuming this is a junction oh perfect so we could take that off and just replace the board here because that's going to have cable entries yeah yeah and then it's even easier even easier oh yes the cables routed through and we could even keep these din rails mm. I'm wondering if we could I wonder if we could just keep the lights <laughs> here we've got the two old uh, actually four old dimmer packs so these are six channel dimmer packs and they've got loads of 15 amp sockets on. And so Corey's just undone all the plugs and taken the panels off. Because basically what we need to do now is figure out a way of bypassing these and getting the permanent power from the board to all of these outgoing feeds to the bars. We're just debating the best way of doing it so that it looks neat, it's accessible and it's clear for someone in the future to actually work on it if it's not us. If he falls off, that'll be the end of the work day, won't it? Day two, and we are just soldering the DMX outputs on each bar. These are all going to be permanently on now, and then the DMX output is going to link all the lights on the bar with its data bus. So we've got five of these to do, one down. It's annoying working in a school because everything has to be checked. You have to ask for permission to turn stuff off. You have to get the gate opened because it's school holidays, so you can't just drive on to site. Um, so yeah, all the little things take longer. And we also have to finish work by four, which is really annoying. I did not like school at all. Being back here is a bit uncomfortable. Not that I went to this school, but you know. So we've stripped the wires back and I'm just tinning the ends before I put them on the connector. This soldering iron, by the way, goes on a Milwaukee battery. Brilliant for this sort of thing. Save bringing a 110 volt lead up the scissor lift, etc. So this is a five pin XLR connector. So it's similar to what they use for microphones, but when we're doing lighting control, quite often it's all five pin. Um, so you plug the lead cable to the light into this socket, 
and then it's got solder pads on the back which is where we're trying to get these wires on Corey, do I need two flexes this side? Oh, yeah. We are ready to put the patch panel on now. So we've just finished soldering all these five pin connectors. So these five go out to the lighting bars and they are gonna patch through to this DMX splitter here. So that means that basically if there's a fault on any of the lines, you can isolate them per bar as opposed to just one long line. And then what's kind of handy is there was this existing DMX cable in the um, room already which runs through the containment to here. So basically that can plug the lighting console into the wall here, neatly get connected into the splitter and then out to the lights. So we're just gonna label these up so we know which bar's which and label that as the desk. Um, and then I just need to change the plug because for some reason this splitter shipped with a European plug. And then Corey has just about finished the mains wiring, which looks really neat. So we've basically bypassed all the dimmers, but still kept it on a sort of neat DIN rail system. So yeah, nearly ready to turn lights on. The splitter is now um, wired into the mains. So if this all is wired correctly, then I'm gonna plug these lines in and we should get some lights come on to say that the DMX data is flowing. There we go. So that's just telling us that DMX data is coming from the desk, which is currently downstairs, and then coming to all the outputs. That is good news. So that is it, we are done. All the lights are working and uh, that's basically an overview of DMX lighting in a theatre or a concert or anything like that really. So um, if you want to learn more about that, check out the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. We begin today by, no, wrong, wrong time. Right. Tell me what you're thinking. Dating, back, set away. Okay. Right. You Les is not the one I've got. It's not right. the flipping you Les. There's other toilets and they're so disgusting. Oh, it's the same one. Oh, it's awful. Oh.